Yeah. So, hello, everybody. <laughs> welcome to my channel. Um, welcome to um, Charlie of Charles Heathcliff. Say hello. If you don't know who Charlie is, you might you not. Should, know they, they should know by now. This is a Charlie. But they might not because we've had both of us. Have, it's been a hot minute since we recorded. I mean, obviously, yeah, but, today, people but... should know. People should know. It's a Charlie and Charlie production. I mention you in like every single video. You mention me in about half a dozen. So. They don't know us by now, then they'll never, never know us at all. <laughs> I love that you did that song line. Right. So, yeah, um, as you can tell, um, today we are filming, or we've got autumn leaves. So, we're doing like, we're doing autumn books we both want to read. Uh, I think we've, we've got like, it's meant to be five each, but I've definitely got a lot more than five. I've done sort of, I'll I do like that we, so w without talking about this, we both came in autumnal colours today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got like we we'd both be matching these leaves over here, yeah. which was completely unintentional. We both love autumn, though, don't we? I think it's quite safe to say. Yeah, we like anything a bit liminal. <laughs> Keep the winter and summer away from us, but as soon as those ta the time the in between times comes, that's it. We come to life. Yeah. So yeah, it's all about it's all about the autumn, and today is no exception. Um. So uh, so we're just gonna like make us. I'll let you you start. So. Yeah. Um. So. If I do one, then you do one, then I'll do one, then you do one. Yeah. I mean, as you'll see, it's not one. I've got like, it's, you know, yeah. I've got five books. I've got a pile, five piles of books. Okay. She's got five piles of books. She always does this. Anyway, the <laughs> first book that I'm going to mention is like, this is the only book that I think I have on my shelves that is actually autumnal because every other book, as we know, if we follow Charlie's channel, mine, uh, then we'll know that for the last year I've been trying to get through all the books on my shelves. So I've got very few books now left there to read. But one of the ones that I think is synonymous with Autumn is Joanne Harris's most recent urban fantasy novel, The Moonlight Market. This is similar to most urban fantasy novels set in London and is the protagonist discovering this alternative world within his own that deals with fairy and fae and the courts and all the stuff going on there and I started trying to read it in August and when I did I was like no this isn't the fantasy I want to be reading this is a book that is for autumn if I if I let it get to November I'll let it go too far but or maybe is November autumn I don't know autumn months anymore it is yeah kind of if I let it get to December I feel like it's sort of an in betweeny. yeah but yeah, this the col the colours on the cover, the foiling, everything about this book just screams autumn to me. So, what's your first book? So I'm going to go. Oh, with, no. I've got, I have so, uh, this is. I'll start with singular books because I've got two singular books and the other I've got three parts of books. So, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the singular like one I want to read um, <laughs> upside down. Um, oh no, I've got Station oh. Eleven. By Emily St. John Mandel. This is probably one a while ago. If anyone would have asked me, I would have been like, "No, I don't want to read this." But um, again, it's 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 one it's got that sort of like yeah, it's dystopic. I feel like dystopic is quite autumnal. Is that is that a correct? Wow. wow. I do. I feel like a just like it's sort of that darker, like darker themes, and it's got it's got like the end of the world is synonymous with autumn. Is what it, you like, just it's the darkness, and this yeah, so this is like end of the world plague. I think has hit. Um, I don't like yeah. So it's been one that everyone has been talking about for such a long time, and the FOMO has got to me, and I really want to read it this autumn. So yeah, oh. that's that's my one. Your one next. So next we move on to this, like, we move on to a book that is part of a series that I've been reading now since July of 2023, and I most recently read the third book, which was 650 pages, and I finished that in two days, but I don't think the same is going to be said for this next book, that before I get to the glossary is 970 pages, I think. And that is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan, which is the fourth book in the Wheel of Time series. And I'm thinking this is going to be a good book for Autumn simply because of the heft of it. And I'm thinking of one of those days where I might just be able to sit down and read a good chunk of it. If it's persisting down with rain, then my dog won't want to go out in it. Or I might even take it on holiday with me next month. I haven't decided, but I definitely think that this 
is a book for me because I very much prefer fantasy and a fantasy adventure in the autumn winter months. I don't know why I can't explain it, but I get a hankering for it then. Completely agree. And, Completely agree. um, yeah, I'm hoping that it suits that mood because they do seem to be getting somewhat darker in scope now. Oh, you've been like loving before, that series, though, haven't you? I have. I've heard people say that the fourth book is where it veers away from the Tolkien style world and that there are a few boring books in the series. But apparently, if you reach this point, then you're going to like them. So I'm hoping so. What's your next one? The next one is a reread. Um, I, again, in the autumn, it's the perfect time to sort of reread. And um, because it's like you want to go to books that are familiar to you, that have got that cozy, warm feeling that you can just snuggle up on the couch and just know and love. So um, this is one I've read, read. I think this will be like it, when I read, it'll be my third time, it'll be fourth time this shit that I've read it. And it's, sorry, Cemetery Boys. I'm going to probably put pictures on screen of all these. Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Um, and this is sort of a queer fantasy romance um and it's sort of is like uh it's just it's just just such a great book and i love it love love it so so much it's got like it's really adventurous so if you like sort of like very plotty but it's very plotty um it discusses really important like themes to do with these um young queer um teens and that i just love so much um there's yeah it's just it's just wonderful and like one of the main characters is a bit of is sort of a ghost no spoilers um here and um so yeah yeah sort of paranormally romance and yeah i can't wait to reread it yeah just it's just it's like a hug of a book to me this book is it just gives you all it just perfect autumn vibes perfect yeah I, I think that says a lot about the charlies that one book that charlie says is like a hug of a book to her has the word cemetery in the title <laughs> yeah i mean yeah yeah. But it's just really, it's just so heartwarming. I just love it. Yeah. Um, well, I'll also mention a book that features the undead. Yeah. And okay. go with Anno Dracula by Kim Newman. This is the book that I bought when we met for the first time in Crew. Yeah. And <laughs> we left Waterstones. And then I said to Charlie, do you mind if we go back to Waterstones? And I got the book. And that's nearly two years ago now. And I still haven't read it yet. So... I want to, I started trying to read it a few months ago and similar to The Moonlight Market, I just recognised it wasn't the time of the year for me to be reading that book. From the way it begins, it also seems quite a plot heavy book. It's set in an alternative Victorian England where vampires actually live amongst people and characters like Dracula and inspectors from Arthur Conan Doyle are featured inside the pages as real people. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. And then, obviously, there's a huge gamut of sequels to this one that I can go to if I enjoy it. Which is really good. You need, it's good to have backlist, like, more books to head to after. So the next, like, this is where we go into, like, lots of books. Like, not lots of books, but, like, my sort of category sort of book. Okay. Um, and it's sort of a witchy, sort of middle gradey kind of, like, book. And, and so um, I read... Earlier, like literally, actually, when I was on holiday, I read this book, which is Hedwitch, which I also would recommend for autumn. Um, it's middle grade, obviously, um, and you follow our lead character who, at the beginning of the book, um, she's in like a boarding school. She's not happy. She sort of escapes <laughs> and then ends up staying with. This is not really a spoiler. I'm Shelley certain this is a blurb. Um, so stays with um some family that she didn't know she had, and then starts this whole like discovery of like a, this sort of witchy life and um in this autumn i want to read the second book in the series i literally well, i am, I am started it already um and yeah it's just really really fun the characters are really really well drawn um it's there's like features a, a gray cat which i just love so much the cat is his very own his own character um yeah it's just and in this book specifically um Again, I'm not going to go into the plot, but there's a section where one of the uh, there's like a tea library, which um, 
I would be a messaging yeah, me. Yeah, message to message Charlie. But I was like, that's just Charlie got like me, me, Charlie goals. I would love to have a tea library. That is like dream world, Charlie. I need a tea library. So um yeah, I'm excited to read this. And there is also a third one that's coming out at the end of the week, which I'll probably get hold of and potentially maybe even read in October as a treat to myself. So. I was going to include that book on my list, but because I didn't want to buy any new books and I've discovered that my library doesn't have this book. I just uh, well, like actually, you for Christmas, spoilers. We never... I, um, the library services has one copy of the book that you aren't able to put a hold on and you aren't able to take it out. I have no idea why. So it is, it's just it's just a great little to. series. And like it's it's so well done. And it's it's not like the best writing in the world or like but yeah, it's just it's just gorgeous. Just loads of fun. Oh, your, your next one. Well, now I'm moving on to the rereads because I don't own enough books on my shelves that just felt like they suited the autumnal mood. <laughs> well, the first one that I've been thinking about rereading for years now, ever since I first read it, is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield because I talk about this book all the time that Katie over at Books and Things recommended this for years. She held read-alongs of Setterfield's books over a few years. And one day, I was at work. In a quiet moment, I picked up the 13th tale off the shelf and just read a load of pages in one go and took the book home. And all I did that evening was sit there and read that book and then took it to work with me the next day and I finished it on Saturday evening. And it's one of those weird moments where a book just utterly held me in its grip until I'd finished it. And I don't know whether it'll do that again since now I know everything that's going to happen in there. But it was just an incredible experience that I felt like this type of modern gothic literature feels synonymous with the time of year. 100%. That, that is a perfect autumn choice for anyone to pick up. I, I really think that is such a great choice. And actually, you know, if I have enough time in the autumn, I would 100% reread re 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 that. It's, it's so many quotable moments in that book that, yeah, it's, that's a brilliant book. So good choice. Um, next what thing I'm going to say is one that I think that I, you know as we both agree on is classics. So classics and autumn um, definitely go hand in hand. Obviously, Victober every year we um, obviously we do read classics outside of Victober, but um, yeah. And so I've got two classics that I really want to get to. Um, I've got Beloved by Toni Morrison. This has been one that's been sat on my shelves for a little while, and I read my first Toni Morrison this year. Well, Sula. I read Sula by Toni Morrison. I really and I really really enjoyed it. I say enjoyed it because obviously Toni Morrison's books are quite hard hitting, was they? Yeah. And I know this is going to be very hard hitting, but yeah, I just I really want to read it. So um, yeah, that sort of goes in that category. And also, I want to read the more Thomas Hardy. As I spoilers, if go and watch Charlie's video. Um, I want I said it mentioned um because in that so yeah, and this this is one that my lovely friend Jack sent to me. Jude the obscure. So yeah, yeah. I just. You know, like that... Jude the Obscure. So, in my video, the book that you mentioned there from Hardy, I think is a rather miserable, tragic book. Yeah. And I still haven't read Jude the Obscure because nearly 20 years ago now, my English teacher was recommending me books. We used to have to go and do sessions in the library or whatever, and you had to pick a book and then you had to read it. I've no idea why, but that's what we had to do occasionally. And we were walking through the shelves and he took Jude the Obscure off the shelf and said to me, you aren't old enough to read this book yet. Wait a few years. And I know that he probably meant in my late teens, but then someone spoiled what happens in Jude the Obscure for me. And I'm like, I don't need another Hardy tragedy here. I don't I, need that in my life. I know and this then, is meant to be one of the... You have to be about. I think everyone says this is meant to be like the saddest one, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you're just over here like, give me the sadness. No, I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily want sadness, actually, because there's plenty of sadness this year. So, but oh, it's, just, it's just like, I do feel like I really loved the Hardy yeah. at the beginning of the year. So I just, there's something about, I want to, yeah. So. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. You go now. Not, <laughs> um, so, a modern classic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a book that I only read last year and again is on my rereads and I think the reason for me that this has become synonymous with autumn is simply because of the time of year that I read it I don't know that it's an autumn book but it's just that 
that's when I read it. So now that's the association I've made. And that is Behind the Scenes at the Museum by Kate Atkinson. Most people would think after I read every single Kate Atkinson book last year that I would be finished with her and I wouldn't want to read her or reread her ever again. I'm waiting for her new Jackson Brody book to come out in paperback because I have most of her books in paperback. Uh, but this was just... Oh, I can't explain the how this book just felt like everything she does in all of her other books. Like this, She's not at her best as a writer yet in this book, but the story there and this tale of family I thought was done incredibly well. I don't necessarily care for the twist at the end of it, but the storytelling up until that point I thought was fantastic. Is and it a standalone? So, uh, yeah, most most of her books are standalones apart from Jackson Brody. Ruins, and even then you can read that separately. And Jackson Brody, although characters do pop up every now and then, she does tend to explain who they are, so you don't need to have read all of the books. You can just dip in and out as and when. No, okay, that's fair. Right, so my final like category pile of books that I really want to read this autumn are dragon books. And again, if you would have like spoke to Charlie, Charlie 2023 or Charlie prior to this year, I would have been like, dragon books? Charlie? Like, you know, like, like that. Yeah, I am not really naturally a fantasy reader, but this year I've really started to try and like dip my toes into it a little bit, like gen gently, I would say, not like thoroughly. I don't want to go like high fantasy because I feel like I don't, don't know if I could cope with that. But I've got three books on the floor um, that I've picked up and I'll <laughs> show you guys um, if I can. I've got um, Dragon Mountain, which is obviously like a, this is a middle grade um, one. Again, it'll go in my middle grade category um, by Katie and Kevin Tsang. And this is like, I think there's like a series of six books in this and it just looks so much fun. <laughs> what, Charlie? Go on. I, I, I shouldn't be like that over six books because I've taken on the undertaking of a 14 book series. But, like I heard six books and immediately I was just like, my goodness. I'm not necessarily going to read all six books this year, like hundred percent not. Um, but I was just like, this is like, it's like it just looks so much fun. It's, um, yeah. So it says because it says uh, when twelve-year-old Billy Chan's parents send him to a summer camp in the mountains of China, he doesn't know what to expect. He'd much rather be spending the holidays back home, and then hanging out with total strangers at Camp Dragon. I mean, Camp Dragon. You can't like that sounds so much fun. So um, Camp Dragon. And the picture on the front just looks. Camp like Dragon. Do you walk around with a feather boa? I mean, don't. <laughs> they are so funny. <laughs> oh, not Camp Dragon. Like, so it's... <laughs> that's a whole other image in my head. No. Ah. Um, but, anyway. I don't know why. Dra dra I do think dragons do feel autumnal. Is that like a thing? Like, like you were saying about like, fant like fantasy is like, a, um, like an autumnal thing. So I do think this is why. And like, Gem me and Gem okay. have been talking about a lot about and actually. Anyway, my friends, we've been saying about dragons. And um, so there's another one I saw at the library when I was looking for dragon books, and it's Dragon Rider. Oh, but not like, Cornelia Funk's Dragon Rider. No, this is a different one. And it's new. I... This is, was it, it's got a new new book sticker. I don't know how new out it is, because it might have been new and then shoved on the shelves. I don't know. Um, but it okay. just, like the, the thing on the back says, Jai perceived this dragon had sensed his fading light, his bur his soul burning out. It had saved him, saved him by lending him its own bright light, deemed him worthy, shared its soul with him. He was bonded with this thing. I mean, this just sounds like it's quite chunky. It's like 600 pages. Yeah. But, I, um, I've heard good things about that writer before within the fantasy genre, but I've not read them myself. However, <laughs> what you've just read does sound like a lot of dragon mythos that has appeared within the last 40 years in the fantasy genre. So it will be interesting. I, yeah, th I think. Yeah. No, no, I was just saying. I'm gonna say, like, I, as, as I haven't read a lot of dragon books, um, the, like, like the relationship with the dragon and its like rider. I just think that is just like yeah. such a cool thing. So. That, that was the thing. It was Robin Hobb I was thinking of as well. So I know you've not got to that series yet. You're still very early in your Robin Hood re reading. But one of the sequel series, which is the, where everything starts to come together, so it's like a sequel to Live Ship Traders and the Fitz series comes together with the um, Rain Wilds Chronicles. And that's a series in which people are bonded with dragons, but it affects the humans in very specific ways. 
And it, that's a very interesting take on it as well, which is why I'm going to say I recommend continuing your reading of Robin Hobb just to get I did, to that. Scene. I did see that when I, I, cause I just, I, when I was looking up um, dragon books, I did see Robin Hobb's books come up. So yeah, I'm like, I am excited once I've worked my way through. Obviously, yeah, I've only that's, read like, that's, that's not a series that you can just jump right, straight yeah. into. Unfortunately, okay, you do have to have read yeah. at least. And the la last one is not lastly, but not leastly on that pile. I've got yes. the Hobbit, which is like the like I guess not. It's not the original dragon book, but it's like an like one of the iconic dragon books, isn't it? Oh yeah. Um, so, and I've never read any Tolkien, like, shame on me. I've never even watched the movies. So, um, all my, like, you guys, are, all my friends have been nagging me to, like, get to it. And so, yeah. So now it's like, I definitely feel like this is, like, a high priority, so, this, this autumn. That's, that's a coincidence for me, because last week um, on my channel, I released my video looking back at the books I read in September 2014, and I read The Hobbit for the second time then. And so it's only last week that I was enthusing over my adoration of that book and it is a really fantastic book to read in autumn all i was gonna say was like my question given all the middle grade i've seen you reading there is when are you gonna read the whisper wicks oh i really want to read the whisper wicks that like people as well <laughs> so this is one that um I actually and lots of people like i've spoken to again like have said that you've encouraged people them to read to want to try the whisper wicks so, yeah. i've been inflicting that book on a lot of people recently yeah. So um, that is definitely one I want to read this autumn, and that is definitely one that Char a Charlie-inspired autumnal book pick. So um, I, I keep thrusting that book in people's direction. Now is the time we're going to pick a book for the other Charlie to uh, read. Read one of the, over like, autumn. Yeah. yeah, even though we are going to all try and read all these books, but like to prioritise. <laughs> and I'm going to say for Charlie, I'm going to say the Anno Dracula book. Is that Anno oh, Dracula? Yeah. yeah, it's Anno Dracula. No, that's a good one. That is a that is a good one. Uh, because that's the only book on this list that, out of the unread ones, that I had pre-2023. So that actually sees me getting rid of, well, getting rid of, <laughs> not, um, getting through. So no, that's a good pick, thank you. For you, I, like, I, I think that all the signs are pointing to me having to actually choose this book. Like, you know... I know what you're going to say. I feel week. like I know what you're going to say. Um, go on. You say what you think I'm going to say. I think you're going to pick The Hobbit. I am going to pick The Hobbit. I know you so well. <laughs> this, like, well, the way that the chapters are written in this book very much feel like their own individual stories. So it's one that you can dip in and out of. And I think that it's a perfect autumnal book. But it might also be that I have grown very close to this book and I enjoy the film as well. I'm not going to deny that, but I think that, yeah, it's just got a level of coziness about it. Whilst there is a level of threat in there, it's not, like, exceptionally high. And have you seen the films? No, I have not. Let you, nothing. Oh, my goodness. Well, I feel like you already know how it's going to end anyway. So, um, yeah, I am choosing The Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, Charlie, and thank you for coming on my channel. And everybody um, watching, thank you guys for watching. Let us know um, what your favourite autumnal books are. Let us know what books you want to read in the autumn. Also, as I mentioned on Charlie's video, we are going to be doing the Charlie and Charlie Christmas crackers this year again. So if you guys have got any suggestions, the things that you want to see in that, we have got some ideas, as I already mentioned in that. But we do want to get your input and your feedback and anything that you um, want to say about... <laughs> that like actually charlie you can say what the christmas crackers are actually because i don't think we've mentioned this today okay so the uh charlie and charlie's christmas crackers have taken place annually since 2022 and they are where charlie and i come together to celebrate christmas and mercilessly mock one another we choose books for the other to read we share jokes this charlie this charlie wherever she is that way that way that charlie over there tends to pick incredibly smutty dirty jokes <laughs> Um, oh no, no, she does. But I have to say, I'm gonna the, go first, the first year that Charlie chose one of the jokes, I had to go to a staff party. Terrible things. I don't know why anyone want to do them. But one of the things you had to do, competition wise, was come up with a joke. And the joke that Charlie shared that year, it won. It's yeah. Absolute filth it was. The so uh, you being friends with Charlie is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so any suggestions for that would be greatly appreciated 
uh, yeah, share those in the comments. And also, like, tell us if you would have chosen any different books for us. Like, which pick would you have chosen for Charlie? Which pick would you have chosen for Charlie? That sort of thing. And it's easy because you can't get our names wrong because <laughs> we are the Charlies. That's literally the only reason we communicate with one another. <laughs> We're so forgetful of other people's names. If you're not called Charlie, you can't join us. It's not difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's a little gang, gang of Charlies. We are like the superior It's a gang species. of two at the moment. <laughs> but there are on honor honorary Charlies, and if or, or Charlottes, we like Charlottes or Charlies or Charleses. So like, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you can only ever be one in three. <laughs> it's been lots of fun filming with, with you Charlie um, thank you so much for coming on my channel um, Thank you for having me. so yes and um, we'll be back in the autumn, in the winter go check out Charlie's video actually I'll link that in the description and we'll be back for Charlie Christmas Crackers after that in December so yeah take care and sending you guys lots of love say goodbye Charlie bye Come on.